keep doing what you're doing, be specific about what you're doing, and find that unique thing. Like, what is the thing that's gonna make you stand out? What is that one thing that's gonna make you, uh, that people notice and go viral? And those are, the, those are the moments that make things change. So what is that thing, you know? And everybody has it. They just have to find what it is. Skinny girls weak, the models don't compare. Junk in the trunk, looking like two pairs. Woo, got me hotter than a sauna. Ass so fat, make me wanna thank your mama. Good morning, you guys. So I'm on my way to day three of YouTube Black. Let's go. We about to head to the city. Come on. I'm going for like the nerdy look today. What y'all think? Y'all like it? Thanks, everybody, for coming out. I mean, 
think as excited as you guys are, to be honest. So, uh, we ain't gonna waste you guys' time. We're gonna bring out a special guest, so, you know, give a round of applause. Give a round of applause for Tyler Perry. Hey! wants to know. I know when I seen it, I was a little heartbroken. My mom called me crying. I told her I was going, you know, we were going to come down to Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta. And we were going to have to have a conversation. About yeah. about her dying? About her leaving. About she's her not leaving. dying. She's not dying. She's, so, she's, well, she's not in our hearts. No, she's not dying. She's going to live on in your heart. <laughs> she's Tyler. She's going to be in your heart, man. Hey. <laughs> we just want to know, uh, you know what? What made you decide to lay her rest? Because, how old are you? I'm 24. See, <laughs> I was 24, man. She, she was gonna live forever. I'm turning 50 this year, and I'm, I'm like, wow. Oh, I don't want to be this old grass age playing her. So, so it's just, it's just time. It's been a good run. It's been a franchise that's done a multi-billion-dollar uh, franchise for you know, really good for the company, really good for myself, and it's just time. I want to do other things. Great. So, at any point, you have second thoughts of like. Not killing her. No, I won't like, kill her because they'll kill me. <laughs> I have second thoughts all the time because we're on tour right now with the farewell tour. And, but when she didn't show up, I had to say all of her lines and Medea's lines, and the audience went crazy. And that's where it started. You were you were two. <laughs> that's where it started. That's where it started. <laughs> wow. Okay. So my question is for the um, Medea's lines. Like, What's your whole thought behind this movie and coming out with this movie and it being the last movie that Medea would be in? Was it like a trick to get people to think like, hey, she's going to be dead? Because we saw the movie yesterday, but before we watched the movie, we thought like she was going to die. And yeah, blah, blah. I can't kill her. No, it's like, it'd be like <laughs> killing a family member. Like it's a family member to so many people. So no, I, I, I didn't want to kill her, but I, I, didn't, I didn't know the funeral was going to be the last one. I just made a decision after, you know, all of this and, and doing the final tour. It's like, you know, this is a good time to, to put it to bed because Part of the part of the, the franchise and everything, what I was trying to do is get to those things and bad marriages. I was actually subconsciously talking to my mother um, in my writing, and I didn't get it until I looked back on it. But what I wanted to be remembered as is, is this grandmother that made you laugh, have a good time, you know, forget about it, the man in the dress, but just somebody who spoke wisdoms, made people feel good. Power, right, she thinks it's wonderful, but the truth <laughs> is, I was doing diversity before diversity was cool. Right. I was I was on, you know, hiring people like Idris Elba and Viola Davis and uh, Sophia McGon. Six sound stages, I was comfortable, man. I was so happy there. Everything's good, I was shooting all the half and half months, where I'm like, yes, this is it. But then I got that nudge that it's time to grow, it's time to move. And you gotta be careful when you get comfortable in a situation because there's things will start to fall apart if you don't move. This is what I found just in my prayer life that when things when I'm getting hits to like move, if I don't, things start to fall apart. So I move into this new studio. I didn't want to, but now looking back at it three years into it, now I go, Okay, this was beyond me. It's bigger than me. So you have to understand that when you be that. Make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. Thank okay. you. Hi, Tyler. Hi. Um, I'm Yasenia. We're here at Google. Thank you so much for coming to That's us. It's my pleasure. Um, Everybody work at Google? <laughs> no. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I recently oh. saw Boo with 20 of my cousins. Um, I, I just told them that I met you, so they're all going crazy. That's awesome. Uh, Latin audiences love you. Um, my question <laughs> is, um, for people that are looking to get into the space uh, production, content production, how, what would be the simplest advice, piece of advice that you would give to someone wanting to get into the space? Um, thinking about all of the areas that are disrupting the space, right? You have technology, you have creators, YouTube creators, you have so many Hollywood actors that are already in the space and so many production companies. What would be the one piece of advice that you would give to someone? Tell me what space you're talking about. Are you staying it? So uh, creating, uh, making oh. a movie, for example. Making a, yeah, listen, with the technology today, you can take an iPhone and make a great movie. 
So I, I, I think everything is so open now. It, it's, it's such a great time for, for creators, or content creators, for artists. It's just whatever your uniqueness is, if you have a story that you think is so special, listen, my first play, I put every dime I had in to make it work. And I think now, with all of these platforms that you can you can place them on, you're you're exposing your talent to millions and millions of people. Yeah, no use school, I shouldn't say this to you. <laughs> but the algebra you're probably not gonna use very much. <laughs> but but just I, I wish that I had done better in school and went on to college because I paid for a Harvard education fifty times and all the mistakes that I made. So I didn't realize that everything that I was learning in school and high school would have been so important now. So what I would say to you is the education is going to be key, man. Go on to college to get every bit of knowledge you can so that you don't end up like me spending that kind of money two, three, four, five times on things that you could learn by going to school for a few semesters, you know? So, and, to, to, and because you're here, it tells me you're pretty smart, so. <laughs> but, um, I came to ask, um, as a creator who's using her platform to build opportunities for herself because I'm a stay-at-home mom and I'm just trying to, you know, step out of faith and do something that I love and I'm passionate about, but I'm also really passionate about acting. Like, that's always been my thing. That's my writer in high school. I mean, that's my writer. What's your suggestion? I, I think you do both, but yeah. But, but keep doing what you're doing. Be specific about what you're doing. And find that unique thing. Like, what is the thing that's going to make you stand out? What is that one thing that's going to make you uh, that people notice and go viral, and those are the those are the moments that make things change. So, what is that thing? You know, and everybody has it. They just have to find what it is, and it's usually something that lots of people can connect to. Right? Laughter is always that. So, if it's it's funny and it's amazing, it, people are always just. I, I see clips of stuff that I've done and that make myself laugh from years ago that they somebody's put up on YouTube, and you know, it shows up in the middle of somebody's day. And all of a sudden, you know, they're laughing. So whatever it is, stay specific to it. And agency route is not a bad route, but but I shouldn't say this because the agents will get mad at me. But but uh, there's a shift. Things are changing. You know, things are changing. So just I don't know. You're in the right place. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Helen. Good job. Thank you, Helen. Documented. My question is, as an entrepreneur, what do you? What happened when you have to decide between being true to yourself? Um, believing in yourself and that decision of taking investors' money or, or, or that financial gain where you know your business will advance, but at the same time, being who you are in your foundation has shook it a little bit. And you have to kind of find a balance of do I go left or right, the fork in the road of being an entrepreneur and what is best for what you need to do? I'm a gut guy. Question. Everything's always been about my gut. Like, how do I feel about this? And prayer. Like, how do I feel about this? How do I feel? Am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to do that? And listen to me. Here's the thing, people, when I say this, people don't, my agent clearly doesn't believe me, but but it's, it's I never chased the money. I was very focused on what I wanted to do. I knew I had something that was special that was going to help people. Because uh, my first show was about adult survivors of child abuse, and I thought 1,200 people would come the first weekend, and only 30 showed up. But out of that 30, it helped somebody. So that was my focus. That was always my focus. So as long as I kept my eye on what my focus was, the money came. Everything else fell in place. So don't deviate from the focus. There have been moments that I've had to turn down things. I mean, there was this one deal I'll never forget. was so good, but for me, it just didn't feel right. Um, one, it, it was two and a half men. Uh, uh, Chuck Lorre, who did two and a half men, Roseanne, and we were working on a sitcom uh, together, and it just didn't feel right for me. And I had this deal, I was locked in, I just, everything in me, I was just praying that the deal didn't happen because it didn't feel right. Everybody my age, oh my gosh, you're gonna make so much money, so much money, but it just didn't feel right. So when the deal fell apart, I was so happy and so relieved because out of that house of pain, uh, have and have nots, meet the Browns, all of these shows were born. And the difference is, I own all of them. In that show, I wouldn't have owned anything. So, so, so go with how you feel about it, man. That's, what, is this, what does this feel like? Does it feel right? And if it doesn't feel right, don't do it. No matter what it is, no matter how much money it is, and I know it's hard for, for a lot of people to wait. He just owed me three million dollars, and I got told to that two dollars fifty cents in the bank. You think I'm not going to take the money? But but just, it's got to be what you feel. Because had I had I taken that show, my life would be very different. Ownership would be very different. I would have never been able to own the studio. I would never have been able to hire all the people that I've hired and help all the people and make as many millionaires as I have because I would have been tied to someone else owning my intellectual property. You know.